So my pro tip number two is measuring progress. So throughout your whole periodization, your whole period from start to peak race, it's really important to continue to measure the progress of your athlete. And you can do this in a few different ways, but really you want your fixed variable. So the, the one thing that stays the same every single time. If I'm thinking running, I'm thinking distance. I'm thinking of 5K, right? Never changes. Then you have your independent variable, which changes against your fix. So you've got 5K, independent, obviously time, right? So you have your fixed and then time fluctuates. Ideally, we want it to keep going down, down, down. You want to get faster and faster and faster. We could also use power output. We could use heart rate, bunch of things. But we want that one fixed one. And then we want that one independent one that we look at, or maybe a couple. And I like to use a short one and a long one. So short one, you know, something like one to two minutes. And we can see how the anaerobic capacity of an athlete is improving, tracking, decreasing during different phases, along with the long one, which represents kind of, you know, like an aerobic capacity. So above eight minutes. And that's what I like to keep within the whole structure of a periodized training plan so that we can start to see you know, all right, somehow through the base phase, we're we're continuing to improve anaerobic capacity. One minute peak power keeps going up. So maybe we don't need to apply like a greater stress of harder, more quote unquote specific training for this individual, because what we're doing now, it seems to be working really well. And the main goal obviously is to improve, is to improve and get to the race fresh and ready. So measuring progress, great way incorporate it throughout the program and it helps keep you and the athletes on track so i think this is also really good for all of us know-it-all coaches because we think that we've been coaching for a long time we've coached so many really good athletes that you know we don't need to do these kind of things and that there's no reason why one minute power will improve in base phase Uh, so we're not even going to test it but actually i've seen one minute power improve so many times in a base phase And I think, you know, even for us coaches that have seen all the athletes and have seen all the different training techniques, I think we should still be testing pretty much everything just so we can learn more. And even if we don't learn something specifically for this athlete, in this case, we're going to learn something for our other athletes for in the future. All right. Frequently asked questions. So I mentioned it like, what is 80-20? I get that a lot. So we're talking about 80% easy training across a week. You know, so if you're training five hours, one of those hours is going to be dedicated to like a hard session. That doesn't mean that every single session has to have 20% of it being hard. It's just across a week or across a month. You can have a look especially heart rate zones, super easy time and zone across the last 28 days in training peaks. And you'll see, cool, what are my percentage breakdowns across those zones? Then do I really need a break from training, Matt? Like, do I really need rest and recovery days? Yes. Do I? Yes. A recovery phase. phase? Yes. A recovery phase is a training phase and they maybe don't need to be completely resting, but uh, there will always be with every athlete at every level, a recovery phase where they are not exercising and there are recovery weeks scattered across the season as well. They're really important. They're really part of training. Yeah, that's right. I like to, I I think rest and recovery, uh, maybe like, perceived as weakness words in in our world and i think if we have like adaptation phase or like super compensation week it it might like spruce it up (laughs) yeah you know the less you do the greater athlete you become during this week you're like oh yeah all right less like like i'm gonna do nothing (laughs) and probably for the athlete that goes from the extreme of whatever they were doing to nothing there's probably really applicable and proactive for them um but yeah still matt can i push during a base phase can i push and i guess that leads into like what about what i I gotta go running with my friends yeah i think like social exercise is super important so we're always going to make sure to fit that in no matter when it happens and we're going to build the training around that for sure but that doesn't mean we're just going to go out and thrash ourselves in the middle of a base phase or really ever um but you know fun stuff is definitely important yeah and i think like the 80 20 kind of applies to that and and like you said you know we we often have that bunch ride that group run like that session you know 
it's just going to be too hard. It's and so you got to factor. It just needs to be factored in. You can have it, but don't like. Otherwise, it becomes where does it stop? Like where do you where do you stop going hundy and sprinting for every red letter box or tractor? It just <laughs> it's just a very New Zealand thing. thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Like um, we can like maybe convince your friends to go hard or to go. <laughs> Let me start over. I think um, maybe convince your friends to go easy with you. They might actually enjoy it, and you might all get faster. Give it a go. See what happens. Yeah, throw them, uh, throw them a heart rate. You know, you just even the go to the training zones module. Check out the age based heart rate. Super simple, quickest one. You know, all right, mate, you're not allowed going over one fifty. That's that's the rule. Everyone would, you know, because there's that there's that one athlete that just he's or she like just half wheel half strides just is always you know you gotta put the you gotta put the governor on them i think yeah for sure that'll control it all right here's the podcast where we talked about will not doing what he says right so he talked about himself overtraining, and this was a really good podcast kind of diving into what happens when you don't really follow the plan that you have laid out for yourself or you kind of overestimate what you can do in training. So this is a really good episode.